Hey guys, Desolate Magic here, and it's finally time for the video that everybody's been waiting for. What is the average value of the expeditions? Because you get exactly, precisely one in a normal booster box. And so, you know, you don't have to say, oh, well, maybe I'll pull one in here, or maybe I won't, because you pull one on average, you know, three out of every six boxes, and there was six to a case, so I did them by the case. But then even then, I got three from the same box one time, and then I went 11 boxes without pulling one, and this was BFZ. So I'm glad they evened it out, but you you know they did it just to up sales, but you know, whatever. Anytime they throw masterpieces in, they represent like, I think 12 to 30% of the value of the set. And because people open boxes until they hit, you know, 110, 120 EV, uh, the rest of the cards, all the rares and mythics, foils, all that stuff, the, the normal cards you actually need to play the game, go down by that percentage. So that benefits everybody, just saying. Now that said, oh my gosh, are you going to be surprised at what these aren't worth? Uh, I finally got some pre-order prices, and I think they're pretty accurate. They might be like 10% optimistic, but whatever. And the average price of all 30 of these is nowhere near what I expected. Now, keep in mind that the normal ones that you get from the box toppers are uh, non-foil. They're still premium because they have a special uh, extra gloss coating, and they're almost definitely printed with better ink in Japan. That's the suspicion but they're not foil. Now the original expeditions were foil and those are still like, you know, two, 300 bucks. So you can only get the foil ones as a one in six shot in the collector's booster. So there's going to be a lot less of those floating around, especially since the collector's boosters, like the pack of 12, the box has two box toppers in it. So these foil ones are going to be really rare. And I don't think they make that many collector's boosters. So they might be right up there with the expeditions, but in my opinion, the expeditions look better. So it's really, really difficult. It's actually impossible at this point to predict what the real actual like one week to one month later price will be of the foil version. So this entire rest of this video is only about the non-foil versions, which are basically just another printing of it. It's like, oh yeah, it's an ultra rare series, eh, whatever. It's not that rare. It's in every product now. Guaranteed one or two, depending upon what you buy. So it's not that hard to get them. And remember, that is roughly double the prevalence that they were in BFZ because you would get one on average every other box, I believe. It wasn't quite that neat in the numbers, but it was close. I think in like 100 boxes, you were supposed to open like 40-something, so it was actually a little bit worse than one in two. So anyway, let's jump into it. We've got uh, Ancient Tomb, which is... Uh, a lot of these numbers, by the way, are the pre-order price, the market price right now on Card Kingdom if you were to pre-order it this second. So it's a provable price. So this one is $50. Now, the expedition version of this from uh, BFC, OGW, whatever the hell it was, was $170. It, like, it still is $170 right now. So you can see, okay, $50 bucks versus $170. You can see where we're going with this. Because like I said, these are not any kind of special foil, premium, ultra, whatever, super rares. They're just kind of rare, and they're basically just another printing of the card. And that's practically how they're being treated, it looks like. And I actually made a little spreadsheet uh, comparing the two at the end that'll show you. So uh, let's just get through them here. We got Arid Mesa, that's 60 bucks. Cool. Uh, then we got Black Cleave uh, Cliffs, that is $30, which strangely enough, the non-Masterpiece uh, version is also $30. I thought that was weird. Uh, then we got Blundstained Mire, uh, which is, you know, another fetch land, but it's it's 60 uh, Seems to be like three tiers of fetch lands in there, by the way. Uh, Bountiful Promenade, that is 30 whole dollars. Uh, Cavern of Souls, that's 100 right now because, I mean, the, the non-premium whatever regular version is like 80. Uh, then we got Celestial Colonnade, garbage man land that nobody ever plays with. Uh, it's $6 regular, by the way. I should throw that in. Uh, but this version is pre-selling for 25 I think that's a little high, but whatever. I think that's the lowest one, actually. You know, whatever. Uh, so Copper Line Gorge, uh, that is $30. Creeping Tar Pit, $25. Oh my gosh, the regular version of this is $4. <laughs> oh my gosh. So uh, Dark Slick is uh, $40. Uh, Flooded Strand, this one's surprising. I thought this was one of the higher ones. It's only $60, and the regular one's $22 right now. I bet you two weeks ago it wasn't $22. I think that fell. I don't know. I remember that being higher. Uh, then we got Grove of the Burn Willows. Now, the regular of this is $6 because they, they reprinted a bit. Uh, so this one, oh, this is the lowest. I can't believe this. Grove of the Burn Willows is the lowest. $20 for this version, the Expedition version. Damn, man. Holy cow. $20. That is, that is bad. <laughs> Next up, we got Horizon Canopy. Uh, this is 50. The Expedition version right now is even sitting at 90, like the original Expedition, I should say. I know there's going to be some confusion in calling them both Expeditions, because I guess they both are, even though they're different. 
and they have a different number and they're from a different series, but they're both called the same thing. That that was a little slip up on uh, Wizard's part. Uh, so next up, Luxury Suite. Uh, I believe that's a Battle Bond land. That is uh, $30. Marsh Flats is 40 which is unusual because the regular is 38 There's some anomalies in this. Uh, Misty Rainforest, now we're talking. That is still, believe it or not, only $80. Now get this, the regular version, like literally the Misty Rainforest from like, what, cons or what, whatever last time it was printed? Um, Non-folds regular, $70. So that's why, like I said, they're kind of treating these like just another reprint. It's like, oh, they're newer, they're flashy, they got a gloss coat, whatever, add 10 bucks. You know, 70 versus 80 is not that much. Uh, but the expedition version from, you know, BFC or whatever, $300. You got a $300 Misty Rainforest. So there's a, a big discrepancy here. So will the new foil, new expedition one be 300? Almost definitely not. I'd be surprised if it's, you know, even 150 to 200, but you never know. I mean, it's really hard to say. It could be 400. I mean, I don't know. Uh, so Morphic Pool, that is 30 whole dollars. Polluted Delta, 60 bucks. Okay. Uh, Prismatic Vista, 50 bucks. So we're getting to the respectable ones. And then we drop right back down to Razor Verge Thicket, which is $30. Regular version 8, by the way. So some of these are pumped up just for the rarity in the pre-order. They're going to hit, you know, 15 bucks pretty quick, in my opinion. Uh, Scalding Tarn, here we go. 75 for the regular. And then this one right now, pre-ordering at 80. That's a $5 difference. And once again... The Expedition Scalding Tarn, like the original, is $300. Uh, next up, we got Sea Chrome Coast. Regular card, $7. This one's $40. That's a bit of a gap. Uh, then we got uh, Sea of Clouds, which is $30. Uh, Spire Garden is $30. Strip Mine, $30. Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, $30. Which, here's where it's strange. Valakut, the regular card, $25. This one's $30. Cool. Um, sea of clouds from a while ago, 15 bucks, regular 30 for this one. So it seems like there's like a price floor of 30 on the kind of rare ones. And then the real established garbage ones are like 20, 25. Uh, so then we got verdant catacombs, another fetch land, which is, uh, 80, uh, normal sitting at 70. So, okay. Uh, then wasteland, uh, you'd think this would be more expensive, but they printed it to death. So, uh, regular is 36. This one's 50 only. Damn. Uh, the windswept heath, this one I don't agree with. The regular is down to 20, and uh, it was, I think, because of an oversupply, it was in like a, a dual deck or a commander deck, and people thought that that screwed with the availability. It really didn't. I mean, it didn't like flood the market, but that's what people thought, and that's that thought has propagated all the way now to 2020. So funny how that works. Um, but yeah, it's uh, 50 bucks pre ordering right now. When it's 20 regular, that's too big of a gap in my opinion. Uh, and then the last one, Wooded Foothills. All right, so that one is 33 regular, and the current one here is 50. So they don't seem to be all that price based on demand, and uh, the gaps between the, the normal one you could just get right now and the ooh special but not foil so not that special version is not consistent in any way. So these prices are subject to change, and when I say change, I mean down. Eventually some might go up, but it's like, if you want the super top ultra rare elite one, you're going to go after the foil one. And everybody who wanted the foil one already bought the expeditions from BFZ and OGW. So it's like how much more demand is there? But then again, you look at almost any place like near mint or, or like from the box ones, even like excellent condition ones, they're just sold out of like a lot of these. So the expeditions are just gone. I mean, you can barely even find them on eBay. So there definitely uh, does not appear to be enough to go around. So you heard a lot of 30s, 40s, and 50s in that list. And uh, yeah, the average of all 30 of these together is currently sitting at, and this is subject to fall significantly, $45.67. That is pretty bad. I mean, for like a... Uh, average price local about, I don't know, what, 120, 125 bucks, I think is what most people pay for a sealed box at a store. You know, taking 45 off, that is cool. That's like the cheapest box you've ever gotten. But I think a lot of stores are going to start jacking up the price a little and they'll be like, oh, but it comes with the box topper. The thing is, nobody in their right mind would attempt to, except for Walmart, uh, sell the loose boosters for above $3.99 because $3.99 has always been their MSRP right up until they canceled the term MSRP. And you multiply that out, it's like one forty three and change per box. So nobody's going to price them above what you could pay for them loose, except unless they're really going to be like, no, this comes with the box topper. And if you buy them loose, you don't get the box topper. It's only $45. So if somebody tries to pull that crap and says, no, we're selling them one fifty a box. Yeah, I don't think internet sellers are going to go along with that price hike, first of all. So don't even try it, store owners. And secondly, that's not all that logical. 
when it's not worth that much more difference? And why are you charging like 100% of the value of what you could pull? And plus, there's a $20 card in there you could pull. They aren't all going to be $100 bills, just throwing that out there. So I wouldn't pay a whole lot more than normal, but $45 is like a bit. I mean, to me, uh, I used to order them, you know, a hundred boxes at a time or whatever from my store, open them all up and sell the singles. And, you know, I was paying, you know, 78 a box. So an extra $45 per box. I mean, that that's like two to one. Are you kidding me? Hell, that's above two to one. But, you know, eBay fee shipping, all that, it never works out that pretty. I don't think I've ever seen a standard set make money after like BFC. It was all the reprint sets and the commander products that would make all the money. So I think that the average price of the foil ones are going to be at least 100 probably over that. But boy, 1 in 6 with 12 packs is one hell of a variant swing, not to mention the value variants. So I would not gamble, and it is literally gambling, on buying a full booster of the collector's boosters. Or a, four, a full box of them. That is an unacceptable level of risk. I mean, that's more than some people would like walk into a casino with, that level of swing versus the payoff potential, high-low versus what you paid. I mean, it's ridiculous. Wizards should be ashamed of themselves for pulling this kind of stunt. I mean, seriously, they made it more consistent, more predictable, and, and more like level-headed by making them non-foil for just the box toppers, and then went crazy with the collector's booster because that's their stupid money-grubbing, you know, cash-grab bullshit product. Oh, along with also uh, the Commander Green Edition and the Secret Lairs and the... Um, I don't know if you guys saw this. You can now buy a officially licensed Magic the Gathering... Uh, what do you call that? Like a, like a fleece blanket or a throw something? I, I don't know. I don't do housewares. And don't forget the Jace shoes. They glow in the dark. They're getting creative with these money grabs and the licensing and just whatever else makes the money because <laughs> God knows Standard ain't making them any money now. Why do you think they brought expeditions back? Oh, conspiracy theory. Anyway, um, that number on the left, that 2827, is the average value of the lowest version I could find of all of these cards. So still non-foil, but like that's what you could buy them for if you didn't want these almost expedition but non-foil versions. So I guess that's kind of like how low they could fall in theory, but I don't know. These are still more rare and better looking and cooler than the original prints. So, I mean, could they settle at like 30, 35 average value? Yeah, that's probably about where I'd put them. Like even up to like two weeks after release, like that early. So boy, that is not good. So I, I think my final verdict is, yay, Expeditions are back. Kind of. They're split and they're non-foil and they're really just a reprint and they're not worth that much. Okay, cool, great. So uh, that's about all I need to know about this. Uh, make an intelligent purchase or don't purchase decision. I'd lean towards don't purchase. Hoard wild cards, play for free on Arena. Just saying. It's safer anyway. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.